In the second part of our two-part series on retreatment of hydraulic condensation, we will discuss some of the questions that have come up regarding the retreatment of bioceramic sealer. If you have not had a chance to see the part one of this video, please see that episode first before viewing part two. We left the first episode with the question of what if there are areas of sealer in the canal with no gutta percha core? Although this problem is 100% preventable, it's worth to discuss it and offer some solutions. In retreatment situations where a sealer plug is present, its location is very important. If a sealer plug is present in the straight portion of the canal, its retreatment is quite easy using ultrasonics. As I mentioned before, an ultrasonic tip with water is the most efficient way to remove the set sealer. It literally removes it within seconds. In fact, a technique used by many people who prefer to downpack their main gutta percha cone is to use the bioceramic sealer for backfill. Here, instead of using thermoplastic gutta percha to backfill your canal, you can actually use BC sealer instead. There is no shrinkage like thermoplastic gutta percha, and the sealer binds or rather bonds to the dentin, giving rise to a true monoblock. And the interface between the gutta percha and the sealer is not visible radiographically. In that situation, the retreatment is quite easy with the ultrasonic and water using an E14 Varios 350 Brassler tip. The tip will remove the set cement and reach a downpacked gutta percha within 10 seconds or less. So the removal of this material in the straight portion of the canal is really not a problem at all, even if there is no gutta percha in the center. However, beyond the curve where a stiff ultrasonic tip cannot reach the cement, this would be more challenging. This in fact is why Rearworld Endo has developed hydraulic condensation technique in its current form with gutta percha center required at the apex. Otherwise, filling the entire canal with BC sealer would have been the better option. The real-world endo hydraulic condensation technique considers all these possibilities and is a responsible obturation method that keeps in mind the potential need for revision should the need arise. Now, a question that I'm often asked by some skeptics is the following. What if someone were to cement a cone four millimeters short around a curve with only BC sealer filling the apical full four millimeters of that root? Is that retreatable? Well, the question can basically be rephrased in the following way. What if someone doesn't pay attention to the directions for use and does something that they're not supposed to do? Will that case be retreatable? Okay. I think it goes without saying that all of us must follow exact directions for use, no matter what material we use clinically, and that any mistake that arises from a failure to follow directions cannot be attributed to the technique. For example, bond failure due to site contamination should not be blamed on bonding as a clinical technique. Instead, in order to benefit from the full benefits of bonding, we aim to understand mechanisms for site contamination and make efforts to eliminate these uh, problems during the bonding procedure. This is not a technique-sensitive obturation system, and the failure of a few to follow sound instructions should not reflect poorly on the clinicians who continue to show successful results following proper technique. For example, we know that gentle handling of nitrile rotary files prevents the breakage. Now, if a heavy-handed individual overuses files and routinely breaks them, does that mean that the rest of us should abandon nitrile instrumentation? No, those of us who follow instructions will reap their benefits. Ironically, while breaking a file at the apex may compromise the success of that case, the filling of the apex with biceramic material only should theoretically not reduce a success rate unless that portion of the canal was never properly instrumented and cleaned to begin with. However, despite that statement, I've done some benchtop testing on this specific issue and wanted to share these findings with you. 
Now, since I'm going to show the retreatment of the endo sequence technique, I figured that I would also show you the basic instrumentation and obturation system as well, and then go ahead and retreat it. This way you'll get a chance to take a look at the way the instrumentation system is designed and uh, also get to see its retreatment. A block has been predetermined to have a medium package of files, and that is a size 40 through 25 or 4 taper files. As a result, since endo sequence is a crown down technique, so we start from the largest file and then move our way down to the smaller file. And then at the end of the smaller file, we go back to the larger file. We call that a cycle. So we go from a size 40 through a size 25 in the cycle and then go back to a size 40. We start from a size 40 and as you can see we use this in a three stroke and out motion. And that's basically enough to load the flutes with debris. Here, uh, after a size 40, we move down to a size 35 and also use that also in a three-stroke uh, and you're out rhythm motion. Then we move to a size 30, and as you can see, 30 is getting closer to the apex. We're about uh, a millimeter away. Next, we use the size 25, 2504, and the 25 goes all the way down to the apex. And that is the first file to the apex, according to the system. In this technique, once the first file to the apex is determined, you begin to cycle again anew, and the next file that reaches the full working length is the master apical file. Here you can see that we're using the size 40 that is approaching the apex, but it doesn't reach it fully, so we move down one file size, and you can see that the size 35 now reaches all the way to the working length, and is therefore considered our master apical file. So the first file to the apex is determined and another cycle has begun and the next file that reaches the apex is the master apical file. Here because it's a block we're using air, however clinically we would be using paper points or um, a suction. A master got a percha cone is then fitted because the size 35 file reached the apex, the size 35 endo sequence uh, BC coated got a percha cone is also fitted to full working length. Now I'm cutting off four millimeters from the tip of this gutta percha cone that has been fitted and therefore the gutta percha cone is going to fit four millimeters short. This is the way we're going to test how do we treat a case in which there is a four millimeter plug of sealer. We then inject the by a ceramic sealer into the canal. I'm trying to inject a little bit more than normal because I'm trying to get a good plug of sealer there at the end. I'm then seating the cone all the way down. And as you can see, a little bit of the sealer is essentially um, uh, puffing out of the apex because I put a little too much of it in there. So once the cone is fully seated, you can see there's very good adaptation coronally, and there's a plug of sealer at the apex, and there's a tiny puff uh, of the biceramic sealer out of the end of the root. I'm then storing the treated block in water. 48 hours later, uh, the sealer is set, and we're ready to uh, start our retreatment. I'm just demonstrating here that the material is set, and as you can see, the set material doesn't really have a consistency of glassy on them or a set composite. It is kind of like the desiccated ZOE or IRM after it sets. So you can see this is that set material, and now we're going to start to heat up the, um, uh, the gutta percha cone on top to create a little bit of a well. The handle here is removed with heat, and then I am um, using the BioRace Zero at a very high RPM here. I use about 20,000 RPM. This is, you've got to be very careful when you're doing this. It's a fairly stiff file. All this is doing now is just giving me a 3 or 4 millimeter plug of gutta percha uh, that it removes very efficiently and it gives me a well that I can then fill with a solvent. For our international um, audience, this I'm using chloroform. It is used in the U.S. It is its use is uh, permitted. However, in some countries, it may not may be used readily. But there are other uh, solvents, uh, xylol, that are also used um, effectively for this purpose. After the use of Biorace Zero, I'm using Biorace One. 
in order to remove the remaining gutta percha and I'm doing that in small little pecking motion as it's moving down. If you feel resistance you can basically remove the bi one and then wipe it but as you can see it's going through pretty well here and uh, slowly I'm finding my way down to the canal. And as you can see here the file is actually sticking out and we're reaching full apex. And they've got a pressure and the sealer is removed. And now we have a path that we can then uh, treat. Now we use a little bit more solvent to remove the remaining gutta percha. And then I use the endo sequence system. And uh, here we're going to use a size 35 first, uh, as it was the matching gutta percha cone that we used. As you can see, the 35 goes down now fairly easily and it reaches down to the apex. And all you need to do at this point is to go up one size to a size 40 and try to reach that to the apex. And that cleans out the uh, gutta percha and the sealer. This is the size 40. And now, as you can see, that's reaching down to the apex as well. You can use that in a little bit of um, um, circumferential motion to remove some of de the debris from the canal walls. And here I'm now using ultrasonic tip with water. As you can see, the water removes the debris very efficiently. And um, you can also use a file handle, and that will allow it to go a little bit deeper. Varios has also a little file holder where you can place your own file and it reaches all the way down. Now that we saw that retreatment was possible in this particular case on a block, now let's take a look at a clinical case and see how it fares clinically. This tooth was sent to me for retreatment. It was treated by a general dentist very recently and a crown was placed on the tooth. The patient had um, discomfort so the final crown was not cemented with permanent cement and it was basically put on with temporary cement and the patient was sent to me for evaluation. Since the crown was not put on with permanent cement, I decided to retreat the tooth. As you can see clearly, the root canals were not filled to the apex, and they're well short of the biological standards we're trying to achieve. Now, surprisingly, I found that there was temporary material in the axis opening, and there was also a cotton. So I don't know how the um, permanent crown was already constructed without the um, placement of a proper core, but um, you know, the, given the quality of the root canals, I guess there were some uh, uh, treatment planning and treatment decisions that were made that were probably inadequate. So after removal of the uh, provisional, you can take a look and see inside the axis opening that uh, essentially there is gutta percha and uh, biceramic sealer that is fully mixed and really hasn't been properly cleaned out. But upon further examination, we can see that there is a significant amount of decay also left in this tooth. Now, that is a clear indication of a lack of understanding of what we're trying to achieve. Not only this root canal therapy was filled well short of the apex, take a look and see how much decay has been left behind. One of the principal uh, objectives in endodontic therapy and, and access opening is the removal of all decay. Now you don't want to do your root canals while there is still decay present. In my opinion, uh, all of the decay should be removed prior to instrumentation because instrumentation is about removal of, uh, of decay and bacteria. And if you still have decay in the area, you can take some of the material, some of the decay um, and bacteria in the decay down into the canals uh, during the instrumentation and especially during the obturation. So here we just clean up around the, uh, the tooth and upon further examination we see a fairly deep crack in the mesiobuccal root area around the area where um, the decay was present. So essentially by not removing all of the decay they missed the presence of this deep crack in the mesial root which is deep enough that it does affect the 
prognosis of the tooth. Now, this time, the prognosis, uh, the questionable prognosis was communicated with the patient who was frustrated enough because of the discomfort and so on that uh, he elected that he would have the tooth removed. So I decided, nevertheless, uh, before the extraction, uh, to just try to see if I can retreat those buccal canals that were filled short and see how far we get. So I decided to use the ultrasonic here, the Varius 350, the E14 D-tip, to make a little well of the gutta percha. You could use the heat to remove a little bit of gutta percha, but it's interesting to realize that you can actually remove the, uh, the gutta percha with ultrasonic and water as well. So here I'm using the um, ultrasonic and water to remove the gutta percha. Now it's also important to, um, to dry after this use of ultrasonic because if you're going to use chloroform or a solvent, the area has to be completely desiccated as the chloroform will not completely work on the um, gutta percha if you have water around. So I'm using the Biorace Zero again in the same way as I did in the block to create a little bit of a well on top. And after removing or making a tiny well so that it holds the, the chloroform, I'm now using here, in this case, the uh, endosequence 2004 in these small little picking motion. Just the one time go down, engage some gutta percha, bring it out and wipe it. Same file, go down, a quick engagement, get a little bit of gutta percha, bring it out and wipe it. And then apply some more chloroform, wait a little bit, and then do the same process. So doing the same process in the both buccal canals, I just move my way down with a single file in this gentle motion of removing a little bit of gutta percha and then wiping it with a uh, alcohol gauze. And uh, this is sped up a little bit here so that you can see the process by which I'm moving my way down only about a millimeter at a time without rushing it or pushing it. That's the safest way of moving your way down here. If I ever reach a point where I feel the file is not going anywhere, then I would stop and use a hand file. But doing the same process, I managed to just get myself all the way uh, down and then confirmed with the um, Apex locator and these files that I did manage to get all the way down on the buccal canals and um, that was it. As you can see, even in situations where the cone is not fully seated, the canal appears retreatable. However, I would like to emphasize that Rewald Endo recommends full seating of the cone at all times. We should all realize that incomplete seating of the cone is always preventable as the clinician should recognize this issue immediately during the cementation when the cone does not reach the full working length. If the clinician was unable to reach the full working length to begin with, well, that's an entirely different problem. Please remember that all cones should be fitted prior to cementation, their length confirmed and then verified during the cementation. To review the technique, please watch the video describing the basic hydraulic condensation technique. As you can see, hydraulic condensation, as developed by Rearworld Endo, is a predictable and retreatable technique that is not only effective due to the superior properties of the bioceramic sealer, but also it is an efficient method to achieve quality obturation. For Real World Endo, I'm Ali Nese, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Music